Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're taking it back to the classics. I've got Federal Power Shock 150 grain and 30 out 6. And here is the box for that Federal Power Shock 150 grain 30 out 6 load. Has your deer icon right there. Let's take a look at the back. Here is your promo information for the Power Shock Bullet Power Shock load. You can stop, pause, and read all that if you'd like to. Let's look at the ballistics information. Velocity, they claim 2910 at the muzzle. We will see how close we get to that. Let's go ahead and open it up and take a look here. Comes in these plastic containers here. I really don't like the Federal ammo uh, holders like this, but whatever. Yank one out. Good looking, clean, simple stuff right here. It has the blue sealant on the primer as Federal does. Let's shoot the stuff. And the test rifle today sitting on this cooler here is my Tika T3X Superlight Stainless Chambered in 30 out 6. Of course, it has a 22.3 inch barrel. And up top, it's got a Leopold VX3 HD 4.5 to 14 by 40 scope. And coming on back, of course, it's got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs holding five 30 out 6 shells. And flipping it around to the other side it has my elk design on here check out my website masonleather.com i would absolutely love to make you one we'll be taking three shots from 100 yards firing into 10 percent ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the fbi's ballistics testing protocol and while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other after the shots we'll examine bullet expansion weight retention penetration and velocity my goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And let's go ahead and take a look at the velocities for that Federal Power Shock 150 grain 30 out 6 load. Our high was 2855. Our low was 28.42, and our average was 28.48, so very consistent, and not too far off from the factory spec of 29.10. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Federal Power Shock 150 grain 30 out 6 load. At the same time, I'm also filming the Federal Fusion 150 grain 30 out 6 load, so that's why I've got two sets of blocks down here. I went ahead and left them how they lay after I shot them. Um, I'll rearrange them here in a minute so we can look at penetration and everything, but 30-06 absolutely slams these things around. And these gel blocks are about, I think, 16 or 18 pounds a piece. And 30-06 just flips them over up in the air like they're toys, like no other caliber I've tested so far. Um, this is how the Power Shock one's laid. It flipped the front block completely over. These are the Fusion ones right here. But I'm going to go ahead and reset these up and uh, we can look at penetration. All right, so I've got everything straightened out again. Let's look at those power shocks. I did capture all three bullets and we've got one just on the end of the first block, right at, we'll give it 15 and a half inches, it's right there. And then the other two are in the second block just past the crease. So we're gonna give both of those, we're gonna call it 16 inches because they're right there. Let me see if I can show them to you right here. They're like way in the middle of the block. So there's one and there's one and then there's the other one. So so pretty consistent, well actually extremely consistent penetration with these loads. Let me see if we can see the wound cavity. So bullet goes in, it's a little tough to see, opens up, starts to taper off at about right there. It's a little tough to see, a little bit cloudy, but it goes to about the nine inch mark, starts really rapidly about the one and a half inch mark. Got some good wound cavity, some good shock there. You can kind of see it right there, the, the clouds down in there. That's gonna knock a deer right on its butt. So let's go ahead and yank these out and take a look at them. And here are those recovered Federal Power Shock 150 grain bullets as fired from the 30-06. These things performed absolutely beautifully. I couldn't have hoped for anything better. So let's go ahead and go over all the metrics weight retention wise. We saw 143, 143, and 146 grains for an average of 144 grains. Now remember these started out at 150 grains. So they lost almost no weight. That's 96% weight retention. These may or may not be bonded bullets. This is Federal's Power Shock line. It's not their Fusion line. And these do not look like Fusion bullets. Fusion bullets have a different look to them when they expand. So 
whatever they are, they sure do work good. And then on to expansion, we saw 0.77 inches, 0.79, and 0.85 inches for an average of 0.8 inches expanded diameter. And that works out to 2.6x expansion, heavy weight retention, really wide expansion. These things are gonna hit hard. And then on to velocity, our high velocity was 2855, our low was 2842 for an average of 2848 versus the factory build velocity of 2910. So we came in 62 feet per second slow. I've seen a lot worse than that. I'm really happy with that. And then on to penetration, we saw 15 and a half, 16 and 16 inches respectively for an average of about 16 inches of penetration. And that is on the shallower side for the 30-06, even with 150 grain bullets. Typically you will see a bit more penetration than that. No doubt these were hampered by their massive and very uniform expansion, producing just a lot more resistance for these things to move through the ballistics gel. And you know, it is what it is. There's always gonna be a trade-off. We got massive expansion, so we're gonna be hindered on penetration a little bit. I wish it would have penetrated a little bit deeper. And then kinetic energy wise, with a 150 grain bullet going on average 2,848 feet per second, that works out to 2,701 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Federal Power Shock 150 grain 30-06 load. Classic deer hunting load right here. Overall, I think it performed pretty darn good. There's one area where I wish it would have done a little bit better. Weight retention was excellent. It acted like a bonded bullet. From what I understand, it's not a bonded bullet. Maybe it is, I don't know. What I can tell you is I don't think these are fusion bullets. When you look at fusion bullets, because there's a lot of information out there, a lot of people who say Federal loads fusion bullets in their power shock line in certain calibers, sometimes, not all the time. It's really hard to get good info on that. But when you look at these bullets, they don't look like fusion bullets after they've expanded. So I don't have an answer for that. All I can say is they acted like a bonded bullet. We had 96% weight retention. Great expansion, 2.6x expansion. You can't ask for much more than that. They opened up quick, really good uniform expansion as well. So it's not just like a shard of the bullet sticking off here and there, it was the whole thing. So it's got a big old hole gonna punch through whatever you shoot it at. Velocity was also pretty good. We only came in 62 feet per second slow on average, sort of par for the course with factory ammo. This is a lot better than a lot of other 30-06 loads I've tested, I can tell you that in terms of velocity. And of course, I've got a 22 inch barrel on my rifle. I think actually it's 22.3 inches. You know, gotta add that little 0 0.3 in there. If you're shooting a 24 inch barrel 30 out six, you might come closer to box spec. It is what it is. Last thing I'm really worried about. And here's where I'm a little surprised, penetration. We averaged 16 inches of penetration. It was all very uniform, very consistent. 15 and a half, 16 and 16 inches. I wish it would have got a little bit more penetration. Usually you see that out of a 30-06. Now this is, it's, it's not light for caliber, but 150 grains is on the lighter end of what people use in a 30-06 for medium game hunting, big game hunting. And I wish it would have got a little closer to that 20 inch mark. Maybe it was that big expansion. Maybe it opened up really rapidly and just created a bunch of resistance and it couldn't punch through as deep, you know, as deep as I would have liked. But it does make me pause and stop because there's a lot of loads out there in 30-06 that they do punch a bit deeper. And that's why we do these tests. That's why I'm doing this stuff so that we can all look at this information and really see how everything measures up to each other. No doubt it would still kill a deer just fine. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with this stuff, this 150 grain Federal Power Shock load in the 30-06. Just wish it would have punched a little bit deeper. If I were picking a 150 grain load in 30-06 to hunt with, I'm not sure it would be my first choice, but it wouldn't be my last either. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.